In this video I'll explain how to perfectly build the uh, center shock on the X-Ray X12. So we got all the parts lined up here to build the center shock. I usually start off with clipping the small eclipse in place onto the shaft, which is a bit of a delicate task, but the easiest way I found is you just push them against the setup board into place on the shaft and we then install the piston which is a one hole piston is the same type of piston which we've used for several years on the x12 platform and we clip the top eclip in place with a plier with a pair of pliers just like this done easily done we then move on to the next step which is the shock body we gotta install the o-ring into the shock body. I usually just soak the o-ring in uh, silicone oil before I install it. Put it in place there and we put the um, little plastic seal on top of it before we close the shock body. That's done. And then we put the um, shock shaft into the body, make sure it's got smooth movement through the o-ring. There shouldn't be any binding, it should move freely up and down. You might need to replace the o-rings after some time because they swell up a little bit when they're in contact with oil, so uh, after a few race meetings you might need to replace the o-ring to have uh, super free shock movement. So the next step, you may wonder why I have these white marks on the shock body. This is because I previously put Loctite on the shock body. Because, as you can see, the spring retainer, it moves quite freely on the shock body. So, how do I counter this? I actually, I add a bit of uh, medium strength Loctite to the shock body before I put the um, spring retainer in place this way it won't move during cornering and you'll have the exact same spring tension which you set in the pits when you come back and it's um it's a real tiny shock that's why there's no o-ring on the spring retainer like on the touring car shock so just use a tiny bit of medium loctite to fixate the spring retainer better. So this part is done here. And then we need to move on to uh, filling it up. I usually just... Okay, it comes with 450 shock oil in the kit and that's what we're gonna put in the shock. Just fill it up until top. Don't overfill it. What I do then is I move the the shock shaft up and down a few times to release any trapped air bubbles from underneath the piston. When that is done, I just let it sit to rest for a bit. You can just put it inside of the spring like that. Let it sit to rest for a few minutes until you don't see any more air bubbles coming out of the oil. So then we need to assemble these bits here. Put the set screw into the bottom part of the shock. We tread on the ball cup. So the new car, the shock is shorter compared to the long shock option of the old car. So we will only need the ball cup. We don't need any extension like we've used on the shock in the past. Okay, that's done there. Okay, so. Now we can check if there's any air bubbles. No, it's completely air free from what I can see. You can also speed up this process by using the, the hoodie air vac tool, which makes this a lot quicker. You don't have time to wait. And what I do then is I push the piston halfway up, so about 50% into the shock. 
I don't use the fully extended or I don't push it all the way in. It's, it has to be in the middle before I, I place the um, ladder into the oil. I then use the tip of a screwdriver to push the bladder into place. I gently push it into place so that it gets seated into the shock body and we push out the excess oil that's gonna come out and you get you can get rid of the, the pressure of the shock this way you don't have to bleed it from the top hole um, as some methods suggest this way is the same method I use for the touring car shock for the T4 shock and usually works really well I try to build a shock with no more than 50% rebound uh, between 0 and 50 should be fine because anyway the shock will lose its rebound after a few runs anyway it will not keep the, the pressure for very long but make sure you don't build it with full rebound because for most conditions that's too much it will make the shock uh, too hard too much pressure so we then install the top cap gently with the air hole pointing upwards so that any air or excess oil can escape through the through the vent hole gently close it don't over tighten it because the the bladder is very small and it will collapse into the shock body if you over tighten it so just tighten it enough to where you can feel some resistance and you can see the rebound is around 50 percent just right then clean off the excess oil you can feel the shock has smooth damping with no air bubbles inside and slowly reaches 50% rebound when you push the shock shaft in then I usually I extend the spring retainer fully, I put a spring on and I push the bottom spring retainer all the way in till it bottoms out and I tighten the screw like that and then you can adjust the shock preload uh, the spring preload when the shock's installed on the car.